Today we're going to work on an English Bell tall case clock. These are actually called tall case clocks. We in America call them grandfather clocks. This clock was made in about 1780. Uh, I'm shooting this by myself so we'll do the best we can. Most of the time these movements are just sitting on a board inside the clock. There's nothing holding them in but the weight of the uh, cast iron weights pulls them down, holds it in. So these just lift out. This is the movement. This is an English bell tall case clock and this is what, why they call it an English bell because it sounds like this. Now, the best way to do this is to take this movement and place it face down on a pillow. Because if you do that, you protect the back of the clock, which is the escapement. It already looks like there's been a repair made. So we'll start to take this apart, see how this goes. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take that escapement out of there so we don't break it. A couple of screws. This is the bridge that holds the escapement in. And uh, we need to take the bell out of the way. There's a bracket that holds the bell on. And then the escapement will come out of the clock. This is the escapement. These are called the pallets. This is the part that goes tick tock, tick tock. Now, because this clock is in for total overhaul, these cables are really old and ugly and disgusting. I'm just going to cut them off, pull them out. There's the pulleys. Every part of this clock is handmade. Because in 1780, there wasn't any factories building clocks. There were clockmakers building clocks. Now I'm going to remove the board that holds this in. There's a couple of clamps here. And here's the other cable. We're going to trim that off. Pull the other cable out. Then the board will come out. There's a lot of years of age on that board. Now, now that that's been done, we can successfully turn this over on its back without breaking anything. Now I'm going to remove the hands. Push the pin out. Take the minute hand off. Don't lose anything. Then take the hour hand off. It looks like it's been... It looks like it's been glued on. There's epoxy on here. Pardon my backside. Good Lord, somebody's actually got a po epoxy on here. There it goes, I broke it all off. Now we pull the second hand off. Maybe we pull the second hand off. There it is, there's a second hand. Now the dial itself, uh, there's a calendar hand down here that doesn't have to be pulled off. The dial itself is held on by pins. We'll pull those pins off. And 
this one down here. And then that's it. The other one's been actual pins from broken. Now the movement comes right off. This is the uh, 1780 English bell movement. And we put the dial away so that we don't damage it. Now here's the movement. That needs to be disassembled. So let's do that. Okay, we take the pin that holds the count lever on. Pull that out of there. There comes the count lever. That's that little sawtooth counts the number. Then take the pin that holds the calendar hand on and the pin that holds the intermediate wheel on and the pin that holds the triggering mechanism on and the pin that holds the stop mechanism on. So we take the uh, stop lever off. There's the stop lever. Then we take the triggering pin there's a spring here. Take this off. This is the lift that lifts the uh, strike mechanism out and fires the uh, count lever down. Then all of this comes off. This comes off. Then you take the bridge that holds the cannon pinion on. Take that off. That bridge comes off. There's the cannon pinion. And then there's always a little washer in the spacer and underneath that that's curved. That's what gives you your friction so the hands will move but it'll also be tight enough to move. Now the front of the clock has been disassembled. The back's been disassembled. All we got to do now is take the clock apart. Take those pins out. There's four pins holding that together. And here it comes. One more pin. Now the front plate comes right off. Oh, wait a minute. The gathering pallets are still on. The gathering pallets don't want to come off. All right, we'll take that all off together. That wheel is still stuck on there. I'm going to have to take that off of there somehow. And then here's the parts for the clock. There. The whole entire clock is apart. Now I'll clean it, make any repairs, put new cables in it, and then test it.